This set of slides continues a series on instrumentation, in this case reliability in relation to measuring, caring, and nursing. So first of all, you have to think about how instruments are valid but not reliable, reliable but not valid, and valid and reliable. Obviously, the bottom bullseye is the best. And these images and the images throughout were obtained from Google Images. So reliability has to do with the quality of, the, of a measurement. How good is the measure? People talk about metrics now. Is it dependable? Is it accurate? What's going on with the error as you report it? Is there any way that you can minimize random error, which is more difficult to minimize than systematic error? So systematic error falls right into reliability. So you want to know that obviously the observed scores or the scores that you get from your participants are highly correlated with its true scores. So you might look at measuring basically the concept of the construct and looking at how the items are internally consistent, kind of like inner item correlation. If two data collectors observe the same event, independently, don't communicate with one another, record observations on an instrument such as a checklist, and then a statistic is calculated, whether it be percent agreement, uh, basically a kappa coefficient or a t-test, or even a correlation, then you say that you've got inter-rater reliability. Sometimes people do intra-rater reliability as well. And then if you measure the instrument to, to, to two uh, people's groups, two, two sets who are the same people with some kind of a time interval, knowing that the interval should really match the instrument, that you get test-retest reliability. And you can do, of course, a t-test or a correlation on that. So instrument reliability basically is important, and people a lot of times look at perfect reliability as being one and no reliability zero. And a lot of times this is most of the time established when we look at internal consistency coefficients, correlation coefficients, and the like. Test retest has to do, remember, with two administrations of the same test with a time interval. T-test statistic, others as well can be used, like correlation coefficient. So for example, you might use the Pearson, which is an interval level correlation coefficient, or the Spearman's row, which is a non-parametric one for in ordinal level data. So if you say time one, you give the care and behaviors inventory to the group of nurses, and time two, you give it to the same group, you can calculate an R or Pearson product moment correlation for total scores, or you can use a row. And obviously the row, similar to a Pearson, similar to a, to a Kendall's, tall, similar to a phi, you interpret the same way. The closer it is to 1.0, whether positive or negative, the stronger the correlation and is in fact it statistically significant. So here's an image from Google that represents test, retest, reliability with the time interval. So you look also at equivalence, a type of reliability. In a rater, you have two observers independently observing the behavior using the same instrument. You look at percentage of agreement. How many possible agreements are there? And that's in a rater reliability when you think about it. And that's equivalence, Cohen's kappa and then other correlation coefficients can be used depending on the level of data in terms of the items and the scaling of the items of the instrument. You can also do an intra-class correlation coefficient using ANOVA, so that means two or more groups can be used. Or you can create some alternate versions of the instrument and ca calculate parallel reliability, which is another type of equivalence and calculate Pearson R on total scores if you treat the data like interval level data. Here's an example of three raters looking at inner rater reliability as they observe the behaviors generated by the checklist on caring, for example. Same idea with two raters. Here you can look at parallel forms reliability in an image where there are two versions of the instrument on caring 
and basically trying to determine if in fact they correlate, but they're created by the same investigator. Homogeneity is a type of basically reliability, it's internal consistency reliability, and typically you want to have at least 25 participants. It's represented by the Greek letter alpha, and essentially it's used for ordinal items. SPSS uses the same formula for both ordinal items and also for nominal level items, a dichotomous as well, which is nominal level, and that's the Cooter-Richardson 20. But when you look into it, it's the same statistic, even though older uh, instrument books will tell you that the formula is different, but everybody uses um, SPSS or some other way of uh, estimating the scale internal consistency reliability for an instrument. So here are some examples of reliability. In a study of antepartum and postpartum patients, the coefficient, reliability coefficient for the caring behavior assessment got a Kronbach alpha of 0.93 for the total scale. When you're looking at the CBI 42, you can see that the subscales, Kronbach alphas, are reported and all of them are really high, which means that maybe you want to decrease the number of items, which was done later. For the CARE-Q, essentially there was test-retest reliability and there was basically a one item perfect correlation. So essentially that was used as, <laughs> excuse me, a test-retest reliability on one item alone. And then you're looking at the caring factor survey, uh, the D model type of it, and the Chromebox Alpha was 0.96 for the final version, which is a 10 item version. Here we have uh, other examples of reliability for the CARE-Q, uh, and essentially there was a modified Ch Chinese version of the CARE-Q, and essentially um, there was some basically match of it uh, to Chinese culture, and you can see that they did test retest reliability with a two week interval, and the P was highly significant. CBI has demonstrated good test retest reliability for nurses, and essentially a correlation coefficient shows you that it's 0.82 or high. Uh, the same is true for uh, looking at uh, an Ireland and United States nurse example in terms of the Chromebox Alpha. Reliability again, uh, looking at the adapted caring behaviors um, checklist, and a rate of reliability for that. Um, McDaniel's instrument was 88 to 100 percent and in the peer group caring interaction scale the alpha was 0.95 uh, so that's another instrument to measure caring uh, related to peer groups for the caring nurse observation tool uh, essentially inter-rater was calculated by two independent um, pairs of judges and you got 38 to 41 agreement uh, and then basically they also calculated um, kappa coefficients. So here's a re reminder of some of the internal consistency reliability that was established on the original Caring Behaviors Inventory 42, and this slide is duplicated from the previous set. Here you have uh, the modified Chinese CARE-Q subscales, and you will notice that they're very decent reliability subscales and that you in fact have accessible, explains and facilitates, anticipates and comforts, respects, helping and trusting relationships, monitors and follows through. So they have six subscales and they report very good internal consistency reliability coefficients. Um, here's basically another one, a PCDI uh, administered 10 days after the first visit to 20 nursing students and 18 nurses, and they're looking at test-retest reliability. They use the Spearman, which is a non-parametric uh, correlation coefficient, and you're seeing very high test, test cor correlation coefficient. So they're the strengths of the association. Looking at the CDI 25, uh, a calculation of the alpha coefficient there as well, and you'd have to read about the CDI instrument to basically note, um, in fact, what exactly was gone uh, on in terms of the methods of the investigators, but it's a large sample size, so that's terrific. Here are the references of this set of slides.